Yo, what's going on, everybody, man? It's your boy, Marcus Elbow. Welcome to Elbow Media Studios. And if this is your first time coming by the channel, I appreciate it. Because evidently, you're having some problems with BeatMaker crashing and some issues with it using up way too much RAM and way too much computing power, man. So, hey, stick around. Because all we do over here is keep it crunk, man. Let's go. Elbow Media Studio. All right, before we get started, man, listen, consider subscribing, consider hitting that like button, hit the dislike button if that's what you want to do, hit that uh, notification bell, so every time I do videos like this, you'll be notified, all right? I had a couple of my subscribers reach out to me about this issue. Last week, we did a stream, and in the stream, we had a lot of communication, a lot of people had input about how BeatMaker is really crashing on them, some of the uh, optimization issues they're having with some of the plugins, especially with Percent and Digital D1. So uh, we really had a great, great discussion about how, you know, what are these issues doing and how is it happening? What's what we can do to try to fix it? So a couple of my subscribers, uh, specifically the fingers and Seth T reached out to me in the comments, the ways that they're working around or the work around that they're using in order for them to be able to make BeatMaker a lot more stable and a lot more user uh, friendly when it comes to using the iPad and not using up so much resources, man, this is going to be a cool tutorial. Let's go, man. You already know how we do it. We ain't got no time to waste. Come on, let's roll. All right, let's jump right in. So, Today, like I said in the intro, we're going to look at how to get BeatMaker 3 to get a little bit less stressful because it seems as if some of the plugins that we love, Percent and D1 and some of the others, even using some of the Fab Filter effects, is stressing BeatMaker 3 out. So what we're going to try to figure out today uh, is how to eliminate some of that stress so that we can continue to work with some of our favorite plugins and, and not have BeatMaker 3 bogged down and start staticking and crashing and having all of these issues, okay? Let's go ahead and jump right in I already got a track loaded and what I'm going to do is I am going to show you real quickly how to alleviate some of that stress let's just go in here and look at our tracks as you can see I've already used D1 uh, two times and I use percent at the top first thing we're going to notice whenever we play this track uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play it and turn it down just just a little bit okay and first thing we're going to notice whenever we go into our our uh, MIDI settings and just our settings in general is look down here at the bottom here. As you can see, we're jumping around between 54 to 70 percent usage, and we're somewhat in the red. I mean, we're at 67. We're at, you know we're jumping around. This is what's causing BeatMaker when you start adding additional plugins. To start to get stressed out you know what I mean because we that that right there is a problem you know we're using up a lot of memory uh, we're using up a lot of computer processing power and as you can see it's still jumping around and we're not even really doing anything okay so how do you get that number lower so that you can continue to keep adding more stuff working with bigger tracks and not having your iPad and have BeatMaker uh, bogged down let's take a look at doing that first thing we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to figure out where the tracks at that we're using plugins and like I said we're using the digital one if I hit the button here you can see we have digital one here we're using that and also we're using percent if I push the button here you'll see percent right there and those are the only three plugins we are using some effects plugins but we're not going to worry about that right now so what we need to do is we need to convert that MIDI data into a wave audio file that way BeatMaker does not have to access percent or any type of plugin while it's playing and while we're working. We already know the track is there. We like what we recorded. Now all we need to do is make it into an audio file. So let's see how we can do that real, real quick. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead on and convert these to audio files. And the way you do that, uh, we are going to go up to our little menu button in the top left hand corner and again if you haven't seen my video on how to get started in BeatMaker 3 I'm going to leave a card right here so that you can go check that out and you'll be able to follow us a little bit easier okay alright so now that we're in the menu section we're going to go to export 
here at the top okay and what we want to do is we want to go ahead on and export this out we're going to hit audio export we're going to not do a master because normally when you do this you would probably put it in a waveform so you could you know take it and master it or put it on itunes or wherever you're going to take it or beat stars however we're going to go ahead and hit tracks because we're going to explode the tracks we're going to make stems audio stems of just those three tracks inside of this beat okay we know that the beat is eight bars so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make sure the duration is eight bars okay we want to highlight the tracks that we want to export and turn into wave files and then after that all we have to do is hit start export okay now export is done all we got to do is hit OK one thing you do want to take note of is where those stems are located and as you can see right here the directory is export is available at export steam test blah 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 directory okay so now that we know that those stems are there and we can easily go check that but we already know that they're there if you want to surely check that to make sure just to kind of calm your nerves all you have to do is go into the folder go into export okay and then remember that name of that track is called stream test so if I hit stream test at stream test and I hit this uh, this identification number there go my stems right there so we're gonna go ahead on and delete those MIDI tracks that we already have and the way you can do that is by clicking on the track icon holding it down right and then go ahead and hit delete and doing the same for the next one and doing the same four percent okay so now those tracks have been taken out of the equation I do have one more down at the bottom which is base 808 we can take that out but we're gonna go ahead and just concentrate on the ones that we've been having some issues with which is percent and D1 okay now that we have those tracks taken out now all we have to do is create three audio tracks if you go right here to where it says create tracks we just hit that button create audio track we're gonna hit one two three because we do have three tracks we need to bring in those audio tracks have been created if we go back to the menu and we already know that we are here because we, we looked to make sure that we did have those tracks there all we have to do is touch and grab and drop it right onto the track okay and there we go exit out of that and that is that track is back to where it was and if we push play Now what's going to be really cool about what we just did is we go into the settings and look at our computer usage now. Remember, we were up around 50 to 70% before. Now we're right around 10%, somewhere around I would, you know, if I had to take an average, I would say about 20%. So we have eliminated 50% per se of usage that we you know that we were losing whenever we had beatmaker pulling those audio uh, pulling those plugins along with the track you know what I'm saying and just that easy we were able to go in make audio tracks and then we can still do the same things we was able to do before we can we can arrange it everything we need to do but now we won't have the problems and if you want to see what I'm talking about if I go back in Let's just say I decide to save this, so I'm going to save it as, uh, we'll go test, and then I'll go test two, and then I'll go ahead and accept that, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to load up that other track, that the first track that we started from, and I want to show you how it bogs it down whenever we load it up. So let's go into our session view, okay? And we're going to go to stream test, the original one. I'm going to go ahead and hit load. And when I load it up and push play, as you can see, we're not hearing anything. It's not playing because it needs time to get everything bottled up and get everything timed in. As you can see. And if we go into our, look at our percentage. Look at our usage here. Okay. We do not want that because it's not even that many plugins being used in this track if you go back and take a look at it. If we go back and we take a look at our tracks, I only have four plugins that I'm using. That's the base 808. I'm using digital D1, digital D1 in percent. And we're already at almost 65% here. 
okay that's what we do not want now let me show you something that's cool if I go back to session and I look for that stream test 2 stream test 2 the one that we saved you'll notice that there's no there's no delay as soon as I load it up it plays right off the bat no problem with our computer usage we're somewhere around 15 20 percent which is great compared to where we was and this right here is a great workaround for being able to really you know have beatmaker work at its full capacity without being bogged down by the plugins that we're using and I want to give all the credit to a couple of my subscribers Seth T and the fingers go check these guys out uh, they really did their due diligence uh, Seth T did some research on this and this is what he came up with uh, he shot this to me and I take took a look at it and now I'm bringing it to you and sharing it with you guys okay okay all right man I really hope y'all enjoyed that tutorial man this is a great way to really stabilize Beatmaker 3 and to really ensure that as you continue to create, you won't have as many issues. Don't get me wrong. It takes a little bit of time to actually go out and do that conversion, come back, bring the files in. And it could end up being a file issue or a storage issue in the future. But as for right now, until Beatmaker 3 and Percent and Digital One and some of these other, uh, D1 and some of these other uh, plug-in companies get their optimization stuff together and some st the stability issues that we're having this is going to have to be the way that we get around some of the, the issues that we're having with beatmaker 3 crashing and really running really terrible okay because we love this app man everybody knows that beatmaker 3 is one of the best music production apps on the ios platform and the ipad i want to thank you for coming by and checking out the channel again consider subscribing if you haven't you know what i mean because over here all we do is put our mad tutorials on beatmaker 3 and all the other ios music production soft music production software so that you you can be more prepared when it comes to creating beats and doing what you love to do, which is making music. My name is Marcus Elbow. This has been Elbow Media Studios. Y'all know how we get down, man. Come check us out on the streams, man. Streams has been going good. It's like a video podcast almost with me working around with Beatmaker or whatever app I'm using and everybody's chopping it up talking about this whole iOS revolution. Don't miss it. Every Friday, 6 o'clock. All right? All right, man. Follow me on all my social media stuff too. What you doing? Double Media Studios, everything. Twitter, IG, all that. You know what it is. I'm going to get a body here. Marcus Elbow, man. Elbow Media Studios. Catch you in the next video, all right? All right, one.